Gather around tier list Timmies. It's your favorite time of the month. And right before we have the Zero Championship Day 2, which is going to be happening at the end of this week, basically. Welcome, folks. Today, we're going to take a look at the set two tier list. So normally, when there's a Zero Championship, I like to do this after day two because it lets me look at what actually ended up winning and what people brought for the top 16. But from the representation, we kind of know what's good. And in general, just like watching how the ladder has been evolving after the nerfs and after the clan events, and stuff like that most people have an idea of what the current rank ladder is looking like and i've definitely trimmed down a lot of the decks to just things that you actually see like things you run into things that are represented in tournaments things that actually like appear in ladder your favorite clan might not be here and that is because all i would say about it is um it doesn't show up might be good might be not moving on right so i remember last month some people were like oh my god you didn't mention this oh my god you didn't show this that's because i don't have much to say about it and i don't want to waste anyone's time of course if you're also interested in the top level of competitive play in the Japanese server. Uh, you can look forward to the live stream. We'll be restreaming it with English commentary with myself and Kai from WCC this Sunday, which will be 28th, if I'm not mistaken. They're also going to be announcing most likely the next Zero set, as well as a bunch of other information for the anniversary, I assume, on that live stream. So you definitely do not want to miss it. Without any further ado, let's get into the tier list. As always, we're going to start out looking at the Game With opinion of the current meta. So Game With is, of course, a big Japanese website. Uh, you can find it by just searching game with Vanguard Zero, you'll find it quite easily. And so their tier list is the following. So in tier one, they put Vanquisher as the best deck. Quite a few people I know would disagree with that. Nemuel, even after the nerfs, is still seen as very strong and the second best deck. Blademaster has jumped up in the ranks as the best Kagero deck after the Overlord, the cross nerfs. But the cross is still tier one, and we definitely saw that at the day one of the championships from all of the players that entered. In tier two, we have Chronojet, Tavas, Victor, Loris. Brawlers are still up here. Ultmile, Revengers, Perditions, and Asha. So Asha is basically here because she has a strong matchup against some of the most popular decks in the meta, which are Aquaforce as well as Bermuda, because their defensive lines that they have during the opponent's turn of like, you know, 15k intercepts, like a 17 or 15k Vanguard, are pretty annoying to deal with. But of course, the control clans can take care of that, and they are still definitely around. And then in tier 3, it's just mostly old decks that I'm not even going to spend much time talking about. There are some decks here that did show up in the, like, they didn't do well, but they did show up at the championship. Uh, these being DP, I think it there was one player and there was a great nature that went like one in five or something in terms of win rate. But it's kind of sad because um, amongst all these decks, there's Susano down here, which is kind of sad. But yeah, I guess it's uh, not rated very highly here. All right, so now let's get into my version of the tier list. And so here we're going to have oh, actually one of my I added a category, but it didn't pop up for some reason. All right, there we go. I added underrepresented because there are some decks that I do want to put in there, even with all this considered. So there we go. Good in theory, underrepresented, but good in theory is how we'll put it. Uh, so as you can see, you added one other new thing, which is good in tournaments, whack in ladder. And so this will basically be talking about like, I've always been talking about these kind of decks like Asha. Well, I guess Asha is this, you know, spoiler alert, that's the, the deck for this tier list in that area. But this is how I've always described Tsukuyomi, like a deck that you wouldn't want to bring to ladder because it's a pain in the ass to climb with. But it's been usually good in tournament because of the fact that you can you know manipulate your triggers and know what your deck order is like and you have silent thomas a win con however while normally i would like to put it here silent thomas a win con doesn't really exist anymore that's kind of the sad thing is that heal guardians just guard it and the attack power is never big enough to get over a heal guard unless you like sack really hard and like check double trigger on it now that you can check three triggers with strides though there is a like technical like there's an idea right that Tsukuyomi already stacks the bottom and all of the G era support for OTT like takes stuff from top and then puts the rest on the bottom so it accelerates the stack so I have hopes but it's definitely underrepresented right now. I don't see anybody playing OTT. The other archetypes that are played are kind of like in here, but I think it's, you know, that's kind of how this is. You know what, I'm adding another tier, man. This is just, this is like, this is the ultimate, like these are not tier one, two, three, four, five, because they're just so random. It's like, these you could say is like tier 67 and this being like tier three, but this is like a very unique kind of tier of its own, right? So I want to see more of Tsukuyomi. I think if we get the Tsukuyomi stride in the future, that will definitely change a lot of things. So I do look forward to that. And I think, Tsukuyomi still has potential just because like you can still rely on Tom a little bit but you have to like have a good stack and like strive to something so you like triple check triggers for the Tom to hit either like two heal guardians or be able to uh, 
get over whatever they have in order to secure the game. The other OTT variant that's been popping up, that's why I made the whole potent category, is Imperial Daughter. So I did a deck profile or deck and fight on this yesterday. And the deck is, I wouldn't put it highly in the highly competitive category. I don't think it's that good, but it was brought by a fair few people. Like when I was looking at the representation of the clan, it was actually brought by three players in the Zero CS, which is, you know, something, right? It's enough for people to think that it's okay. But the deck definitely is pretty like one dimensional and it's just there to shut down like decks that can't hit for high numbers. So it kind of has the same function as Neo Nectar of just like giving a hard time for the smaller attack multi attack decks. But of course, you know, the deck can kind of brick on its own sometimes and it's overall like, it was a deck that came up and people didn't know what to do against it and then they realized oh i should just play more powerful boosters and like gear chronicle players started playing the gear dog that gets power when you put something to the bottom of the deck and then they started making 21k columns more easily and so it kind of like went from this to this to this very quickly so i think it's it's worth to keep in here pale moon i still feel like is a worthy contender this was actually brought to the zero championship as well i think it can still blow up randomly you know on people's faces just because it is a deck with a very powerful like multi-attack combo from very early on everyone is very familiar with this deck though that's kind of like the downside of it i would say but i would still rate and uh, look here as a deck that's worth like looking into the only thing is the pillman doesn't get their support in like the, the main g support for quite a while and so i wonder what they're gonna do with the look here stride that came out in fighters collection because that came out way before harry came out and so Pale Moon did have two strides from the very start, well, almost the very start of G, before they got to Harry the next year. So I hope that we do get those two strides because that will make Pale Moon even better because then, you know, Lukier actually has a fighting chance in my opinion. So I would kind of put it here. I'm also gonna put Blouse here as well. I think Blouse with the Victor support have some pretty strong plays. Like there's people running around with ethics stand like at all times, you still run into it here and there. So I think that it's worth kind of considering, especially because the strides and the generic cards for uh, Nova's in G are pretty good. So then we have Shadows. I still will put in highly competitive. I think Shadows will always be quite good. Brawlers are no longer the best deck, which is kind of like, that was the best matchup that this deck had, but it's still really strong. Like this, the break right turn is still great. Like these are the same reasons I said last month. You can stride over the Mordred before you go for the break right kill turn. And it's still very strong. Like, it's still really strong this deck can play very aggressively and like not really get punished by because of how much you plus so i think because of that shadows will always be very good like i've been telling you guys this since this deck first came out like it's always been very nice sin buster was brought to the zero cs or at least dp was i don't know which version but i'm just gonna put all of dp as a whole in underrepresented it pops up here and there there's random you know daisha gamers that pull up in the ladder but I don't really know if it's like really that great at the moment, so I don't really want to put it too highly for the time being. Then Nemuel, I don't want to rate this as a best deck. It's still, it's very good, but I think losing, they got a kind of like slap on the wrist. I would say that they got a slap on the wrist, but honestly, the power level of the current meta is way lower than it was before. So this could technically get bumped up to here. Like Nemuel is still just as good as it used to be and it's annoying for the same reasons that it used to be. And if anything now with Heal Guardians and with the like stride pool that the deck has, being able to go into Livy at times when it like, you know, going for the Legion isn't the right play, like when you don't want to be recycling anything or, or you know, things like that. You can play a slower game plan and kind of like drag out the game like that. Um, so I think Nemuel is still going to be pretty strong. Spikes pop up every here and then, and I think they're still quite strong just because the, you know, the whole bad end combo is still going to be very good. So I think I would give that like the potential it deserves, I would say. Same goes for Link Joker. I personally like to play Link Joker in ladder sometimes. I don't really stream when I do, but it's fun to just kind of like pick it up. Like when my uh, dailies ask me to play Stargate and I just like play Link Joker and usually win because all of the current decks in the meta, except for Bermudas, can't really fight against Link Joker that well. And so because of that, I think that Link Joker has a good matchup against majority of things in the ladder. It's just that if you run into Bermuda, it doesn't feel as good. So that's why I wouldn't put it in like highly competitive. But hey, we might be getting Link Joker support in set three. We don't know that yet, unfortunately but all things considered it should be the case seekers i think also i would put around here i don't think they're that great them at the moment of all like the like royal paladin versions or like things to combine with the alt mile support i think that jewel knights and pure alt mile are way better personally but seekers are still like 
fine, I suppose. They have a pretty fair package. And that's, I think, their biggest weakness is that Seeker's a bit too fair. Whereas other decks like Jewel Knights at least excel in the early game in order to like rush down your opponent, which I think is kind of what sets them apart. So I'll just immediately talk about Jewel Knights. I personally want to put Jewel Knights pretty highly. I think Jewel Knights Alt Mile is the best version of Royals right now. Just because Jewel Knights have a very strong early game, they have access to Sword Me, they have access to pumping your own columns very well with the Symbolin, they have access to the Algaro. You can do pretty insane things by going like Knight of twin sword into a sword me sword me into something else to make a full column that you can then attack with so that way you can actually get over a defensive so i think for that reason the like jewel knight royals version right now is actually the best which is pretty surprising i did not expect that to be the case because you know jewel knights became good in early g when the sanctuary guard stride came out which isn't the case for the time being so i do wonder when we're gonna get that stride because i'm kind of waiting to see what kind of like havoc it's gonna cause or if they're gonna like nerf it greatly to not repeat mistakes perditions are very good again because the cross got nerfed and so because of that, Perdition's really just like shot back up. A lot of people are using them again. I've seen people running them in all kinds of variants, like people just running the good old The Great with, you know, the new stuff, like running some of the new cards, like Stride Fodders, Counter Charging PGs, the whole G zone and things like that. So Perdition's feel pretty good. Like this is a very nice meta because a lot of old decks are good again too, which is pretty sweet. I think the G set one meta was definitely quite oppressive and the post nerf set two meta is honestly really fun to play and it feels like everything is really, really good. And of course, speaking of the oppressors of the past meta, we have Brawlers. Now, where do you think I'll put Brawlers? I think Brawlers are still highly competitive. I still think they're highly competitive even after losing the Rising Phoenix and the draw cycle. So if you don't know, Brawlers basically, the Big Bang Knuckle Buster no longer draws you a card when you use its skill and you cannot use Rising Phoenix in the same deck as the one of the Brawler grade threes. I can't remember which one it is, but basically Basically, you can't run Rising Phoenix, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you can still run in other Narukami variants, which is pretty good. But because of like, even with that, you just have to kind of like switch focus and game plan and play a little bit slower and lamer. And you have the G zone too. Like Narukami now has its G zone. It has Chatura if you want to run it, although it's not a brawler. So I feel like a lot of people don't. It's still, you know, it's just nice for the extra card draw, but that's one way to make up for losing Rising Phoenix, I guess. And generally speaking, I think brawlers are still okay. I think you can still definitely run with them. And basically like you just can't get away with the things that you used to be able to get away with. And instead you have to just play more carefully, which is kind of like the whole theme of these nerfs is that you have to play more carefully. Moving on, we have Mr. Chronojet. You know what? I'm going to bump up Nemuel to top decks because I think it really is. Chrono Jet, I think, is also highly competitive. I put it here before, and I'm going to keep it in here as well. It is one of the best of the other decks that are in this, like, lower tier of power level. But I think that, I don't know, maybe even Alt Mile Jewels is a little bit better, to be honest, because of the speed that it has. Chrono Jet is very well-rounded. It's very well-rounded. It has access to a lot of different tools, but now it's slowly starting to feel like it needs a little bit more oomph in order to, like, stand out because it keeps up well. It keeps up with the rest of the meta, but it doesn't stand out the way that some of the other decks do at the moment. And so I think because of that, Chrono Jet will get a lot better when next stage comes out because that will be like the thing that makes it stand out. It's that like, you know, rewrite into guard restrict that is really, really strong. But for the time being, the deck has access to so many tools. I think the biggest dismay is just, you know, people that mystery flare and check a crit, you know, and then a lot of players are now saying it's like, don't run crits in Chrono Jet because you undo your own skills, right? Because some of the best effects in the deck are on hits that you do want to proc or try to proc like mystery flare. And so I think that because of that, you kind of have to be a little bit careful with that but chrono jet is a really good investment because it's only going to get better in the future so keep that in mind alt mile i think regular alt mile is worse than jewel knight alt mile i've said this before already i'd maybe even put it down here somewhere i think this deck is just like the jewel knight version of alt mile is way faster and the regular all mile is like again well rounded but it lacks that like strong and stable early game that we see from the jewel knight all mile and so i would expect quite a few players to bring jewel knight all mile into the top 16 of day two i think that'll be quite interesting to see how the pace is out then blade master i would say blade master is one of the best decks right now maybe even a little bit above uh, Nemuel, because essentially once you knock down the cross, which was the best deck before, the next best thing was always going to be blade master and blade master now you know it has access to retire very easily it has good board control. Everything is quite board based. The only thing is that you have a bad matchup against Bermuda, which can run between like, you know, four to eight resist cards, depending on how much they want to run. And they'll usually make that a thing, right? They'll put down those resist cards. If they do mess up and call something behind those resist cards that don't have resist, Root Flare does answer that. So you have Root Flare as an option in that matchup, but you have to get to turn four slash five, depending if you went first or second. And so I think that Blade Master has a pretty good position in this meta 
know but it does need to play a bit carefully and it needs to go into the long game especially against decks like this but keep in mind that if you let decks like bermuda go into the long game they either have a very strong kill turn combo or they have nemu so keep that in mind as well the cross i think the cross is still one of the best decks i think the cross is still one of the best decks because Yes, it lost Grom, and yes, the cross now has to discard on Legion, but what we saw, an interesting kind of like new development that we saw from the Zero Championship Day 1 stream is that people are now playing this grade 1 that every clan has, which says at the end of the turn, if this card is resting, Soul Blast 1, bounce it back to hand. So what people basically do is you go into the cross, you Legion up, you do your stuff, then you re-ride, you stride that turn in order to, you know, just like do something, and then you use that grade 1 to Soul Blast out the end end from your soul and then recycle it next turn because you've been sitting on a cross without being in legion so next turn you can put that the end back search it back out and use its skill so that's kind of how this works uh the end and the cross i think are still going to be very strong but again just like brawlers you have to think you have to use your brain a lot of players would put them down here i think quite a lot of players would put the cross a little bit lower and i kind of want to put jewel knights up here too to be honest jewel knight all mouth feels like it really is one of the better decks all right moving forward uh victor victor is an interesting one victor was brought by 12 players which is pretty damn impressive actually you know what now nah, maybe maybe we'll keep it down here i don't know maybe i'm just too impressed by the early game of jewel knights right now but I don't want to, like, uh, overstate how good it is, I guess. But so Victor was represented fairly well in this current uh, tournament. And I could see some players still bringing it into the top 16. Because, again, like, so many of these decks are good picks. Like, it kind of depends on your playstyle, how you prefer to play. Victor, if you know how to, like, play it and not be too greedy, there's, like, so many different approaches to it, too, that, like, help you draw more cards, help you have a more, like, stable board and, like, climb with the numbers and things like that. While the deck doesn't have that much support compared to the other decks in G right now because it's an event clan, it is still pretty damn strong, and I think that is definitely worth to be respected. And there's a lot of different ways to build it, too, which I think is another really strong factor of this deck. Moving on, Asha. She had a whole category made just for her, so we're going to put her there. She's not really good in ladder. She's not really good in ladder because she dies against control. You run into Blade Master, he's gonna melt you. You run into Vanquisher, he's gonna melt you. But in tournaments, tournaments are played generally on a two deck basis. And so you look at your opponent's lineup. Typically, the meta right now, people are gonna bring Aqua Force and they're gonna bring something else. Or they're gonna bring like Bermudas and something else. And so you have, as an Asha player, a good matchup against things that are not control. So what you do is you bring something that will win you game one against Kagura or Narukami or whatever that controls your board. And then you will bring Asha that beats that other deck. If they both, if, if both of their decks are, you know, control decks, you're gonna have to be really good with your first deck in order to not have to like suffer with Asha. So it is a risk, but the reason why I put it here is that there is one player that went undefeated in day one and is going to be playing in day two of the Zero Championship with Asha. I don't know if they're still going to bring Asha, but they brought Asha and they actually went undefeated with it. So there is definitely a case in point that this deck is very, very good in tournaments because of the ability to counterpick. This game is becoming just like Shadowverse, where your lineup of two decks, or like if it's three deck, one band, then three decks, your lineup of decks is very much different from the ladder meta like the ladder meta is decks that are strong consistent have board control or have a gimmick that lets them win easier decks like asha right now don't however asha has the ability to counterpick certain matchups and because of that it is quite good in my opinion now thabas i would like to put thabas as one of the best decks i think thabas is very very strong it was quite well represented 34 players brought it in the zero cs day one and thabas i've always found it to be very strong there's a lot of different ways to build it whether you want to focus on magnum assault or on the basils there's so many different ways to like also go on like hard algos we saw a lot of people in day one just go like for four algos the grade one that draws the extra cards draw like like three cards in one turn from skills on your first stride turn. That was gonna be really, really good. And it feels like kind of like the original set two meta. However, in the original TCG set two meta, well, I really did a Simo however over there, but <laughs> in the original TCG meta for set two, Thavas, the difference between Thavas and the other decks was this. Like, Thavas was like way above everything else because you had like the what, Supersonic Sailor, like the grade two that like popped itself to draw two after the fourth attack. Lambros gave even more power. Like, this deck was so much better in the TCG because it didn't work by zero rules. In the zero rules, it's quite different, and Lambros only giving 5k to units also makes it not as insane, but it's still an amazing stride regardless. That is super super powerful and so thavas in this in the zero meta is like this i would say it is a bit above it's a bit above of other things but it still has bad matchups asha 
gets completely melted by because if they get to their second strike turn and they do double jingle flower you just spend two turns doing nothing so if you didn't have a strong start too bad like you literally just got schooled and people aren't playtesting against Asha either with this deck because they're playtesting against like Kagero and Narukami and things like that, which I think people are, you know, it's valid. It's valid to test against that, but it's still a really good deck. It still beats a lot of things. It's very aggressive. It draws a lot. It's just, it's very fun too. That's another big thing for Thavas. It is very enjoyable. Then we have Loris. Loris, I think, is not as good as the other Bermuda decks, but it's not bad either. I would kind of put it around here somewhere. I think it's maybe some, something around here, I think. It's not bad. It has access to like multi attack through Olivia and Spica. You have resist as well, which makes you like any deck that can run resist grade twos is going to be a good deck in this meta because it shuts down the most popular decks. And because of that, I think that Loris uh, is able to kind of like at least fight against these decks, but you are missing some of the things that make the other Bermuda decks a little bit better. You don't have the PG looping of Nemuel and you don't have the crazy seven attack combo of the Mir deck that Zura played at the day one sadly bubbled at 17th but that deck was definitely pretty nuts like i'll tell you that much i'm gonna make a deck and fight on it pretty soon i was very impressed but you know that's just how the cookie crumbles and so i think that loris is like fine it's about the same power level as like altmile i would say like the vanilla altmile and victor so i think it's still fairly decent and people do play it but i think the other decks for bermuda currently are better now coming up next is amir so this is the deck that i was talking about that zura played at the zero cs and i got to play with it myself and the whole point of the deck is is you go into the mirror's stride, search out the mirrors, you queue up the break right turn for when your point's at five, because then you can do like seven attacks for three CB, and you know, five of those are going to your opponent's face if they don't, you know, if they have two intercepts, and if not, then seven of them are going to their face. And it's very strong. It is very, very, very strong. Definitely a very potent combo. I could even see it being somewhere up here. Japan doesn't seem to really think too much of it just yet, so hopefully somebody does bring it to the day two. It would have been nice if Zora made it because that would be a cool deck to see. Represent at the top 16 but i think mirror is actually quite strong it's, it's a deck i'm going to be covering pretty soon as well because i think that the seven attack combo is pretty strong and it still has the other tools of of duos that nemuel has as well like you still run roan and roan searches you bonus pgs you can technically play like nemuel if you want to but then you give up the counter charge so keep that in mind the counter charge is actually quite nice to have and just in general i think the deck is actually quite damn strong all right then we move on to sasano sadly a struggle streak deck if you're going to play with tt in, in, in g for the time being i recommend playing imperial daughter or tsukiyomi actually so sano just draws cards but not much else like you draw cards you have some power-ups you can play stands and like kill them with stands i guess but sadly poor sasano is uh not one of the good clan events it's unfortunately not the case and we have the polar opposite of it right after which is mr vanquisher now mr vanquisher from how popular it is if this was a tier list on popularity in the ladder it's here. I don't face anything more often than Vanquisher. However, see moment, this deck is a little bit of a struggle because Resist shuts it down completely. The only thing you have against Resist is the Vermilion Legion, which this deck runs in, you know, a 3-2 kind of ratio as the other draw triggers in this deck. So your only out against Resists is a Legion. But you don't have ways to power up your rears then because your whole kind of game plan usually is to go into the zoras and then go into the conquest conquest gives 5k to your front row therefore you can go boom the legion does not do that the legion is a big first attack and your other rears attack after that and if your opponent hit defensive that's it your turn is over you just sure you got a free attack to the front row but you're not doing anything else with that whole turn and it feels kind of bad so i think for that reason vanquisher like i don't know you could put it up here but it really does get messed up by the resist decks and they're running around like as the main counter pick here so i think for that reason i would put vanquisher like up here it is a very very strong deck and anything that isn't ready for it will get checked by it funnily enough these decks don't have resists neither does this guy you can run with the brawler resist in this if you want to win the mirror match this kind of has resist i guess if you go into same blow this has a resist which is pretty important so it's an interesting spot in the meta, but yeah, that is kind of my analysis of the current meta in terms of the decks that actually come up in tournaments or decks that actually come up in ladder. Of course, your favorite clan is probably not in here, and I'm sure you're going to be upset in the comments, and I understand that, but you know what? Every clan is going to get their G support eventually, and 
Some of them will be Susano, which will be kind of bad for the time being and will get kind of good slash decent in the future. And then there's things like Battle Sisters that you don't even see in here that is going to become super, super good in the future. Like Great Nature isn't on here. It's going to get really good in the future. Grand Blue isn't on here. You're going to be the moment Grand Blue comes out in G, it's probably going to be the only clan you're going to see for the next six months in the top. Like it's going to be a deck that you're going to see in here for the next six months. I can already tell you that unless they somehow mess it up, but I, I'm sure Game Studio wants your Night Rose money, they want my Night Rose money, so I know they're, I'm know they sure they know what they're doing. But yeah, so this is my take on the current meta, this is kind of how I would rate things. Honestly speaking, you could do this if you want to. You could evaluate the meta like this if you want. Like, the highly competitive and best decks, the gap in my opinion is pretty damn small. Like, the current power level in the meta is just really, really nice, it doesn't feel like too egregious, it doesn't feel too extreme, it feels on just the right level, and I think that's what's making people have so much fun in the current format. But anyway guys, that's enough for me. This has been a very long tier list because I have a lot of things that I want to say about this meta, and I really can't wait to see how things will pace out for the actual finals of the Zero CS this month. I hope to see you guys there, I'm really looking forward to watching all the competition myself. You know, as much as I enjoy commentating the whole thing, I really enjoy just like watching the games and seeing people play out of their minds with, especially this meta, I think this is a really good meta to have an event in and while people were a bit upset that the nerfs happened kind of last minute we ended up with a really nice meta in exchange so i really can't complain but anyway guys if you like the video please do give it a like if you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel as well check out the socials my discord my twitch etc in the description and i'll see you guys for the zero championship as well this sunday but anyway that's gonna be it for me today guys and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>